I give the call to the member for Higgins. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. What is the Albanese Labor government's approach to lowering energy bills after a decade of failed policies? How does this compare with other approaches, and why is it important to be upfront with the Australian people? Yeah. Give the call to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank my honourable friend for her question, and of course, the Albanese government's bill relief starts in one week's time. Three hundred dollars, Mr. Speaker, on top of the bill relief announced in the. Budget before last, $300 for every single Australian with an energy bill. No need to fill in a form, no need to apply. It will apply automatically. And of course, Mr. Speaker, in the longer term, in the medium and longer term, we know that introducing more of the cheapest form of energy into our energy grid, i.e., renewables, is good for bills. That's why, Mr. Speaker, we're pleased that renewable energy is up 25% since we came to office, 8.5 gigawatts. And that's, that plays no small part in the fact that wholesale energy prices, which were $375 a megawatt hour when we came to office, were in the first quarter of this year $76 a megawatt hour, Mr. Speaker, which is flowing through, as we saw, in the default market offer. And the honourable member asked me what plans we have rejected and why it's important to be up front. Well, we saw the release of what we'll call to be generous, Mr. Speaker, very generous in the spirit of, of goodwill, a policy last week of nuclear energy. We saw the sites released. We saw the sites released, seven sites for nuclear energy, six of which six of which the owners have said they don't want a bar of it, and five of which are in states where there's a legislated prohibition. So, Mr Speaker, the policy failed at the first hurdle. But the Leader of the Opposition was asked about the cost of his policy, and I was watching, thinking, well, here we go, here we go to get the figures, the details of the cost, and this is what the Leader of the Opposition said. It'll be a big bill, no question about that. Well, that was the detailed cost that we heard from the opposition. A big bill, no question about that. Now, the question for the Leader of the Opposition is how does a big bill lead to cheaper energy? He hasn't released that, Mr Speaker. He's got the most expensive form of energy available. They think they know better than the CSIRO, but they won't release their costs. Although the Leader of the National Party let the cat out of the bag today, he said, we know, we know what they are, we're just not going to tell you, Mrs. has on DGB this morning. Yeah, well, we'll get around to telling you when we choose. So, what does all this mean for the Australian people? Rights. Well, Dr Roger Dargaville, the director of the Monash Energy Institute, has said, well, the impact could be up to $1,000 a year for household electricity bills from nuclear. The former ACCC chairman, Rod Sims, said, I think it would probably increase household energy costs by well over $1,000 per annum. But better news for the opposition, Dr Dylan McConnell from the University of New South Wales, he had a very different Order, figure. He says only 400 to 500. To only 400 to 500 impact on energy bills, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition says the next election will be a referendum on his nuclear plans. OK, that's fine. Well, if you won't let the Australian people know, they should vote no to his plans, Mr. Speaker. If you won't let the Australian people know, they can vote no. Because, Mr. Speaker, the Australian people deserve better than the scam they got last week from the Leader of the Opposition. They deserve an energy plan that can work, and that's what this government's delivering. Yeah.